missed call um, is a very interesting project. The way I got it was very interesting. And as a film per se, it's a very, very interesting project. It was made by uh, these two young directors, Mridul Tulsidas and uh, Vishnu. And uh, it's, it's, a, it's a very unique concept that they introduced with it. It's, it's kind of a, you know, if you all have seen this film called Blair Witch Project. Right. Blair Witch Project is an entire film is shot on a handy cam. And uh, there, is, there is no actual lighting done in that film. And it's a very, very true to life documentary kind of a feel. So Mist Call is uh, a film about this guy who is an aspiring actor. And he kind of moves around with a camera. And keeps shooting everything around him and keeps shooting himself also. So Mist Call actually happened uh, when I was shooting for the show called Kehta Hai Dil. Uh, and uh, I had an off day and I get a call from this director Mridul um, and he's like hi we are making this film called Mist Call and it's uh, an experimental kind of a film which we want to do which we want to send out send it out to all the festivals it did it did its rounds at the Khan and all these kind of festivals so I said okay cool so he's like okay fine so would you be interested I said sure he's like there's it's not a huge part there are about two scenes would you be interested in doing I said sure so I said do a, when do I come down for a reading or an audition? He's like, no, we're shooting in an hour with you. So can you like come? <clears throat> and I still remember I was doing some grocery shopping for my house. I had these bags in my hand. And he's like, can you come in an hour? And I was like, oh, what do I do now? I didn't have my car or anything. So I just kind of left behind all the shopping I had done. I had not paid for it, fortunately. So I just left it behind, got a rig, went to the set, shot for four hours and I was done with the film. And uh, next I know is that the film has done wonderfully well at festivals. Uh, on some of my outdoor shoots, when I went to the West, I met few people who recognized me because of Missed Call, because of those two scenes that I did there. And yeah, it was, it was a wonderful experience, even as an actor. I mean, it was a very different setup. You, you know, you're enacting with a, with a camera who an, an actor is holding for you. So it's, it, was, it was wonderful. It was just one of very different uh, projects that I have been a part of. Joggers Park. Joggers Park, um, I play Parizad Zorabian's boyfriend in the film. She has about three or four boyfriends in the film. I play one of them. And Joggers Park also happened because I was doing my, you know, my PR with uh, one of the ADs on the film. Yeah. And I just happened to meet him through a common friend who told me, why don't you go and meet him? And, one would always want to be associated with someone like Mr. Subhash Gai. So I said, okay, chalo, ja ke milte hain. And just about three, four days after meeting him, he calls me and he's like, there is a crisis shoot that we have to do. Are you available these couple of days and we would like to shoot with you? I said, sure. And um, I obviously had to meet Mr. Subhash Gai because it was his approval that, uh, and he was shooting the, the remaining because Anand Balani ji, who was shooting the film, expired in the middle of the film. So he... So Subhash Gai ji took over the part and I had to be working with him so I waited an entire day in his office and you know in the night he came over and he, appro uh, he approved of me and uh, yeah that's how I mean someone had already shot for that part and Mr. Gai went through the rushes and he didn't like that boy I don't know for whatever reason and he, they had to reshoot that, that entire portion so that's where I came in and and it went off well and yeah, that's about it. Joggers Park is a film which repeatedly comes on television, so it gives a lot of mileage. Now this is of course, uh, so to speak, the success story. We want to know where you started your journey. Yes. How you started it. How you reached to the level of a door. Okay. Okay. To work with Subhash Gai or Aditya Chopra or Nagesh uh, Kukunu. Yes. It's obviously a feather in a cap. Yes, cap. yes. So coming from ground zero to reach to this level, we want to know about that journey. Okay. <clears throat> well, actually, um, my modeling career, I, I basically, I was in college. Let me go right back. I was, in, I was studying in St. Xavier's College in Mumbai and uh, there used to be a lot of talent scouts which used to happen in St. Xavier's for group shoots. 
and these various people would come down from these production houses doing ad films and they would pick up college kids and bring them for ad shoots as, as a crowd. And a lot of times main models also got selected like that. So my, my actual modeling journey began there. I, I was just uh, about, you know, sitting in college and we got picked up for this ad film shoot for Wix, which was happening. And uh, that was the time I was just dabbling with this idea of getting into modeling. And I had just, just done some headshots of mine and I was kind of just beginning to circulate them to people. And this girl comes up and she's like, we're doing an act tomorrow. Would you like to be a part of it? And we'll pay you like 500 rupees. And, and I was like, oh, wow, lovely. You know, I'll be there kind of, yeah, college kid. So I went for it and uh, I was, you know, it, it was like a, a college setup. And in the front row were these main models. And there was this huge, it was a classroom. So how you have these auditorium. auditorium kind of a feel. So I was right up on the last desk and uh, and we were having fun shooting and everything. But every time they would, the, the director would shout out action, I would feel like a camera is there. I mean, I not see it. Where am I, you know? So right from that day, I had this thing, I had that feeling in me that I want to be in front of the camera. I don't want to be in any fifth row or tenth row where the camera can't even see my jeans, you know, so to speak. So <clears throat> then, then I, I started working with that production house on the regular and started doing group shoots with them. And, and I did few group shoots and then as, as I started seeing models work in front of the camera, I was like, that's where I want to be. I, I don't want to be in the background. I'm not, you know, although I've begun like that, I don't mind it. It's given me access to all these people, but I want to be in front of the camera. So that's when I started pursuing my modeling more seriously. On one of a group shoot like this, I got picked out to be the main model because the director shot with an actual model. He didn't like his portions. He picked me out from the crowd. He took some shots of mine and I was there on the ad. I mean, it was my face on the ad film. It was for a, for a pen ad. So I said, okay, fine, I think I have it in me. Let me like pursue it more seriously and let's see where it gets me. I had all the support from my parents. They were like, do what you want. If this is what your heart is, you know, telling you, you, you need, out to, need to be out there, then go ahead and do it. So then I kind of got a proper professional portfolio made, started uh, circulating it to ad agencies. I only thought I would model because my parents were very clear about the fact that I need to have an educational backup as well. So with college, obviously, ad films were something which I thought I could manage, not a full-fledged serial or something like that. And in that process, I, I met a very sweet lady. Her name is Mona Irani. She's a coordinator. I'm still very much in touch with her. She's, she's an agent, a casting agent. And she uh, kind of uh, told me that, you know, we are, we are auditioning for a TV series excuse me, a TV series called Hip Hip Hooray, where we need these bunch of youngsters and, and it's going to be a very fresh team. We need new faces and the directors new, the production house, <clears throat> UTV is dab dabbling with a very new kind of a project. So um, I was a little apprehensive. I was like TV serial, college ke saath ho pai gaya nahi, you know, and Mona was like, just give it a shot. What's going? I mean, at the most, what will happen? You'll go for an audition and have another experience to your credit, you know. So I said, "Chalo, dekhte hain." And and my my audition was fabulous. Uh, Nupur Astana, who's the director, uh, she kind of had a very very impromptu kind of an audition. It was not where you were just given lines and you were asked to. It was like an interview. A lot of uh, personal things were asked and a lot of. Uh, uh, in-depth experiences were brought out which kind of showed the kind of people we were and not just pretending to be pretending to play a part and the next thing I hear from Mona is that you're on and I was like what are you saying and then I I had a tough nut to crack which was my father and I, I you know I was like uh, dad this is what has happened and now what do I do so he said okay fine do it I don't have any problems just give me a promise you will complete your education I said, I give you that promise. And it worked to <clears throat> it worked totally in my favor because hip hip hooray, we only used to shoot on a Saturday and a Sunday. 
so monday to friday i used to attend college saturday was the only day that i used to miss out college and uh, i used to work on saturdays and sundays and hip hop hore became a huge hit it was a huge success and it kind of began my acting journey so i used to still in touch with those people a lot very much very much very much in fact we just had a reunion about a couple of months ago and all of us met and and it's just great because with my hip hop hore kids i mean we still consider ourselves kids because that's how we began um with all of us it's a, it's a very strange space that we belong to uh, strange in the sense in the nice way that that we became so close when we were filming that project that um, that even now that closeness remains and and there is no gap when we meet i mean we meet after 4 years we meet after 5 years but when we meet we just start off from wherever we've left behind you know we uh, there is no gap there is no awkwardness uh you know now what should i say to him or what should i say to her we just there where we left off so i think that is the most amazing quality that all of us hippie bore people share